Hello and welcome everyone. This is Mike. I'm the founder and CEO of Sweet Dash. This video is just one in a series of many videos that will be highlighting both new and current features. Be sure that you're subscribed on YouTube and following us on all social media to get the latest videos and updates about new and existing features. All right, so let's get started. All right, today's session is going to be on invoice generators. Let's work our way through this a little bit at a time. Uh, we're gonna cover the on-demand invoice generator, the recurring generator and the accumulating generator. But before we do that, let's talk about generators as a concept. If you can see my screen here, you'll see I'm on the list of invoices, right? And you'll see that some of these were, were created directly and some of these have this little gear here, which indicates that it's uh, it was created by a generator, and it's in this list. And if you look here under the generators um, drop down here, you'll see that there's three options here: on demand, recurring, and accumulating. And this is completely separate from this list of invoices, which shows how they were created. This one's a manually created, this one is on-demand generator, this one is by an on-demand, on-demand, etc. Okay? So what's the difference and what does that all mean? So let's look over here at our trusty whiteboard and see what we can do. All right. So let's first just break down manual invoice creation. That's when you are using the add invoice form, which you can get to here by clicking add invoice, and then you just get to create an, an invoice. Good old manual point, click, assign, create items, set all the metadata, uh, I call it here, the metadata here, uh, this, your custom field, your payment information, all this can be done one time. I'm gonna create one invoice and send it out. I can set up automations here. I can send the client an email. I can set everything here for one invoice to go out to my client. Okay, so that's okay and that's good. Uh, that's, that's typical. But what we like to focus on in Sweet Dash is automation, of course. But let's let's look at how this works. So add invoice form, and then you have you set the invoice may it meta, the creation due date, all the things we just looked at. And when that's done, you have a new invoice with item taxes and discounts, and you manually create and send. Okay, so boring, right? Okay. Next thing we want to do is we want to look at is this idea of manual versus automation. Okay. Now, what a generator is, it's completely separate from your list of invoices, okay? And that's the first thing to understand. A generator is not some element that turns into an invoice and morphs into an invoice, changes into an invoice. The generator always stays, and we like to equate it, and the analogy is that it's a factory, okay? So imagine a generator is a factory that generates invoices off the assembly line. They come out, and they go away, and they become invoices but the factory still remains and it's configured to do specific, uh, to create invoices in a specific way, but once it does its job and, push, and the invoice cut rolls off the end of the assembly line, then the invoice is gone and it continues to be, um, and, can, and continues to be an invoice and it can be paid and it can be archived and all the things that, uh, that can be done with invoices, but the invoice generator still survives and still stays there unless you do something with it, okay? So on the add invoice form, this is the manual. We just looked at that. But this is the invoice generator route where we can pre-configure all these manual items, these, these this metadata, and get everything set so that it's ready to generate, say, in an automation, if it's called and said, and you say, okay, generator A, I want you to do your job. Then that generator will create an invoice. It'll generate a standalone invoice, as we said. And then you end up with the same thing, but this one was pre-configured, pre-canned, and set up ready to use in an automation. And you called it in an automation. So in a millisecond, this invoice was created according to your configuration and, and assigned and sent, if that's what you uh, configure it to do. Okay, let's continue to look over and see just a little bit more reinforcement here, okay? Here's our invoice generators. Let's say we, in, in our world, we make, say, five different ones to do, they have five different jobs, and they could be on demand or accumulating or recurring, depending on the use case. And when they're called in an automation or in the case of recurring and accumulating, when a time um, 
uh, period passes. Usually one month is the best best uh, example of how it's used in business. Or one year uh, or every quarter, however you configure it. It will look at what's there. In the case of accumulating or in recurring, it will look at what you have set and it will create a generator from those. It will create an invoice from those items according to the configuration. Drop it off the assembly line, right? On, on to, or drop it onto the assembly line, I guess is a good way to say it. It comes out of the factory onto this little uh, assembly line. And it goes down and it drops into our invoice list, right? This is a list of standalone invoices that came from generators, but they're not generators and they are no longer connected to the generator. If we go back here and look at our invoice list, let's just leave this because we don't need to see it. If we look at our invoice list, this is the invoice list that's associated with, this is the list of invoices as you see here, and this is associated with this list, and has nothing to do with the invoice generators, excuse me. Okay? So this is the best um, diagram to focus on to really understand how invoice generators create invoices. Very simple. All right, let's go back now. And we'll look at these three options, an on-demand, a recurring, and accumulating. Okay, so I have an on-demand uh, list here, I have a recurring list here, and I have an accumulating list. Um, let's look at on-demand. And before we do that, let's look at the, uh, let's go back to our diagrams, okay? All right, let me zoom out, move back. Okay, so an on-demand invoice generator looks like this. Okay, let's just say these are both on demand, And it contains uh, somebody is waving. <laughs> I guess somebody's here. Uh, items plus meta metadata. Uh, so we set the items. We have the metadata set of the invoice. But there's importantly, there's no client assignment in an on-demand generator. All right, let's go back and look. Okay, if I want to create an on-demand generator, I'll click here to, to create the form. And this was where you'll see how this works. So what we're going to do is we can set the items, right? I can say, okay, let's add this item. Let's add this other item. Okay. And just really break down these items uh, as far as what it needs, this invoice needs to look like when it's generated. I can give it a title and I can use even use placeholders in the title name because this is not a generator, but when it's uh, created when an invoice is created from this generator we will take and dynamically replace these items and that way you in your generator I'm sorry in your invoice list you'll have uh, unique names here because what would happen if all the names were exactly the same it might be difficult to uh, stay organized so you can use these placeholders to keep that from happening in your invoice list okay so you'll set all these items you'll set the uh, generate as open or as draft. In case you want to review them, you'll set it as draft. If you want it to go right away, you'll set it as open. You can even set uh, installment payments here. We'll discuss that a little bit later this week. Uh, you can disable online payments. Just like all these are the same uh, elements that you'll find in an invoice. Uh, you set your gateway, you can set custom fields, you can set automations. And every invoice that gets generated by this generator will take on these settings. Right, so you can set aut automations, for example, to send emails to specific people or to start a project or to start a document signing based on the payment of the invoice that comes from this generator, right? And so the idea is that you'll use this in an automation or in an onboarding situation so that when a, some part of your workflow happens, you know that you need to charge that person, say, $500 for a specific item and that's in the workflow. You, you just don't know who the person is yet because you have a workflow and automation. Here is the title that you're going to call this generator by. So in an automation, you when you go to the drop-down menu, this is the title you'll look for. And you'll say, okay, yeah, this is the one for $500, for example. right? And you know because you created it that you set up everything correctly here. And you know that you, because you created it, you set a 14-day relative due date, just like we have in other automations. It means if this, is, if this generator creates an invoice on August 1st, the due date will be August 15th. Uh, just adds 14 days to the day it's generated. 
And you know because you created it, it's going to send the client a new invoice uh, notification and you can save this generator. It'll be in your list and it'll be ready to work. And all you have to do is call it in an automation, right? So just like in an automation here, let's just look at how this works. You can uh, type in generator and you can see all the options here. Here's on demand. This is the one we're looking at now. And you just call, select it from this option or this one with the placeholders. And when someone, when the target, when this automation is working, the target gets identified and we add the target. We create an invoice for the target from this invoice generator, you know, these details, just like you see here, right? So when they go through and we call that automation, boom, an invoice drops assigned to the target with the, the amounts, the items, the configuration, the meta, the payment, the automations, everything associated with the same way we configure the generator goes down this little thing and drops in your invoice list, boom, assigned, can be paid, can be archived, can be set, and goes into the past. Next time that happens, another one comes out, another one comes out, and you stack up your invoice list just like that, and your invoice generators are there just to do their job. An on-demand invoice generator is meant to be used in automation, is meant to, maybe you can call it uh, from the uh, CRM dashboard or from the list, you can just, you can automatically just apply it to a client, so you get off a phone call or something like that, trigger an on-demand invoice generator. You know you did all the work already, you configured it already, and in 10 seconds, you can have an invoice sent to that client after you hang up the phone, as opposed to getting off the phone and then going to your invoice tool, logging in, oh, I forgot my password, let me reset, <laughs> right? And then, okay, let me create this invoice now, This it's this, how did I do it last time? Let me look at another one, now I gotta clone it, or duplicate it. Now I got to figure out. Oh, let me make sure I don't leave any other data from my last client in there because I look unprofessional. Next thing you know, it's an hour later or 45 minutes, and you've used all that time doing admin work when you could have had a uh, very easily had an on-demand invoice generator that's just configured properly. You call it, the invoice goes out, everything's done. You're done. On to the next thing. Or you know, out the door, go have fun. So, uh, and, and, and the thing is, if, if you, in an automation, it can make, uh, maybe you don't get everything right the first time, but as you uh, use it in battle, you'll just layer it, you'll tweak it, you'll make sure it's right, and then soon you'll have full confidence that, okay, now when I hit this thing, it happens exactly like I want. So, uh, invoice generator, that's the on-demand invoice generator, okay? Let's look at... Uh, recurring invoice generator. Okay. So recurring invoice generator works. Uh, we're going to leave this, uh, this idea of dynamic and direct aside for now. We're going to handle this at the end. So if you're confused by this, uh, later in this recording, you'll see it. Let's go into a direct recurring generator. A direct recurring generator means it's assigned, okay? It's already assigned. You'll see that it has assignment. And when I create it, I'm going to assign it. So let's just say that I uh, started with a new client and he has agreed to pay my recurring, um, let's see if there's something in here, uh, my standard monthly retainer. Okay, good. Let's just get rid of this, okay? So now this client has said that I want to, uh, I agree to the standard monthly retainer. Very good. And we add this and we set this up. And what we're basically saying is with this, and I'm going to be able to set the um, recurring frequency now. Okay. I'm going to set the first, first creation date. Was, this one's already done. So if I started with a new one, it would allow me to, uh, you know what? Let's start with a new one. Let's start with a new one. I want you guys to see exactly what we're dealing with here. So we're going to start with a new direct recurring generator. Okay, so I am can assign this one to the same client, say, for example. I can set a title. This is going to be my invoice title, just like normal. Say, um, recurring fees. I'll set my item. 
retainer we said okay and now I can set the I'm gonna send it generate it as open when it gets generated it's gonna be open I want to do it every one month or it's easy to do it every year I can set a first creation date for today or for 14 days from now or 30 days or I can just choose it I can say you know what I told him we would start on December 1st that's good that means the first invoice will be created then and then every month after that I can allow partial payment I can all these same options I will get a relative due date just like we thought so if I set it for December 1st the relative due date will be December 15th on January 1st it will be January 15th every time this um, this works it will work and set the due date okay and then I can activate this all right so when I activate this generator it's now ready to work for me okay it's a direct generator set for recurring fees this is assigned to uh, Harrison Ford it's active and its next creation day is December 1st okay so let's look at how this works just like the others but a recurring invoice generator has the items it has the meta and it does have the client assignment and then it has a scheduled recurring generation okay that means that on the schedule that I identified in this case let's go back and just look at it every month it's going to create an invoice assigned to Harrison Ford and either make it available for online payment uh, it's going to email it to him just like we configured okay now Harrison will have to actually log in and pay this with this card or with a stored credit card or he will have to send in a check however it works for you but what's important to understand is this is not a subscription okay a subscription is completely different than this meaning when you start a subscription they give a credit card at the front end and then that's it it just happens every month or every whatever period after that no no invoice is created and they don't have to continually come back and pay it pay it pay it but some of your clients in, in traditional business settings you're typically not setting people up on a subscription you are sending them an invoice they are writing a check or you know using their um, accounting software or however it is to have a check sent to you uh, they usually work with checks in traditional big business um, so that's this is this is set up for that it's set up to every month or every, whatever your frequency is it's going to create your all your invoices and send them if you choose or set them as draft if you set that and then you go in and we can you can turn them send them yourself manually but in the most automated way possible you can set it as open you can send set it to send and then that's it every month this thing will generate an invoice and send it for you okay so it's a generator it sits it doesn't change it drops the invoice every month it gets sent to the client goes in the invoice list the client can pay it they can see it from their side they can pay it and next month it'll do the same thing every month a new invoice a new invoice a new invoice and that is the generators job okay and you configure this generator this specific one say is is the one here and if we were talking about this specific generator this direct generator we would say this one is assigned to Harrison Ford this factory this entire factory is dedicated to Harrison Ford to every month create an invoice exactly like we have configured here okay and that's what a direct recurring generator is this one can be have all the same elements as Harrison Ford's but this one can be assigned to someone else okay stay tuned we'll explain this okay all right so the important thing to remember is the recurring invoice generator you do set the items you do set all the metadata including the payment data and you do assign the client or clients it can be said you can assign this to a circle and every month everybody in the circle will get an invoice if there's 20 people in the circle 20 invoices will drop onto this conveyor belt and go into this list okay for those of you who say maybe are in web design or web hosting if you have a yearly web uh, hosting fee you can set one generator like this one and call it website hosting set all the metadata associated with it 
And then instead of a, a client, you can check this box and assign a circle. Doesn't matter what it's called in your case. You can call it website hosting. And every year, you set this for a year, every year, this invoice generator will drop an invoice for all 200 of those clients. It will create 200 separate invoices and boom, just put drop them right on this conveyor belt and 200 will go into this invoice, each one directly assigned to that an individual person who is in part of that circle. Now, how much time can that save you, right? All right. So there's many options around the recurring, but again, this is not a subscription. You cannot have subscription items on a recurring invoice generator. I think that's important to say because recurring items on a recurring invoice generator doesn't make sense. It's not logical. You can have recurring items on an on-demand generator. So if you, well, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to confuse you now. You can have subscriptions uh, or plans, what are what we call plans, uh, subscription plans here. You'll see that here. So if I wanted to, if I call an uh, on-demand generator in an in invoice, I can have a static item and I can have a subscription plan. And if they pay that, remember it's only one time an on-demand. If they pay that, then we end up in subscription land, which is if they set, let's say, uh, this one, it's a dollar a year, right? So if they pay this invoice that is resulting from this generator, then yes, if they pay with their credit card, they will be set on a subscription for a dollar a year. That is not possible. Uh, you cannot have subscription plans. You see it's not here on recurring and you cannot have them on accumulating. It's not logical. I can win that argument every time. <laughs> you might think, well, well, maybe we could do it. It's, it really won't work, okay? So just think about it in the terms of um, how you can use it in your business, but in this case, you're gonna create an invoice every month is the most typical way to do this. All right, let's move on to accumulating generators. All right, these are my favorites. All right, let's say, we're gonna look at the, this one, or should we create a new one? I think we should probably create a new one. Uh, let's go ahead and click Add Accumulating Generator. And we're going to choose the direct here, directly assign the clients. We'll get to the dynamic. I'm revealing it a little bit at a time. It is very cool, but uh, your brain needs to be ready for it. All right, let's 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 work with Harrison again. We're going to have a, a Harrison Ford. We're going to say monthly expenses. Uh, let's do this one. Monthly legal services standard. We're going to say. Uh, now we're just not going to set any items because I'm going to explain how this works. Okay, let's say that Harrison hires me as an attorney, and he says, "All right, look, I just want you to just bill me every month for for your work. Whatever you do, I want you to bill me every month." And you say, "Awesome, got it, thanks." All right, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go in and create. Say, I'm, we're going to start working together on December first. So I'm going to create an, a direct a direct accumulating generator for Harrison. I'm going to come in here. I'm not. I don't need any items because of the way it works. I'm going to say every month, I want you to create a gen, in, generate an invoice as open every one month. Uh, let's make the first creation date on December 1st. That'll work for me. And then no payments. Everything's set. We're going to take Stripe as the event, our gateway. We don't need any of this. We're going to say, for, I'm going to give them 14 days. And we're not going to enable these for now. Uh, Minimum amount, this is really nice. Let's say we do like one hour of work for Harrison at um, $200 an hour because I'm a good attorney. Um, maybe I'll set this at uh, $500 because I don't want to bother him with anything less than $500. And in that case, it'll skip the generation. We'll talk about that in a minute. And we can send a client a new invoice. Okay, now I'm going to activate. Okay, so I've activated this generator. I have this monthly legal services generator for Harrison Ford. This is the accumulating generator. Now, how does it work? So what it does is every month, you notice that I didn't add any items, right? I didn't add any items. So every month you have this metadata and the client assignment is set here in the generator. And we're gonna use this generator to accumulate our work 
and our and our expenses say and any timers that we run and then based on my recurring schedule the generator will create an invoice from the items that are currently in the generator and then it will refresh itself which means it will wipe all the items out from that month because now they are printed on this invoice and went to the invoice list okay let's look again so let's say that I um, I, I, I purchased something for for this job okay as so I make some purchases so I want to say all right this is going to be my um, purchases I spent two thousand dollars on I don't know whatever I needed for do this job okay now I've added that and I'm just gonna go down here and click activate again okay so now this has recorded uh, $2,000 I have $2,000 in this accumulating generator nothing has happened yet because guess what uh, it hasn't been called into action yet it's just holding it like a bucket like a bucket just holding that $2,000 then later, I have some other uh, item that I need to ask. I say, oh, yeah, you know what? We did a, a certain service for you that we typically bill at $500. Let's add that. So I'm just adding, 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 right? People in my staff who have access to this or my billing manager can come in here and add. Now we're at $2,500. Guess what? Anytime you run a timer, you can you or your staff or your freelancers or your teammates you just tell them okay just add it to uh, Harrison's accumulating generator so when they complete their timer they can bill it automatically don't have time really to show all that but you can easily bill a timer and you can add it to an existing accumulating generator they'll choose this one because they know who they're working for and which which uh, generator they need to add it to and that timer will end up in this list and that that's so this list will grow and grow and grow throughout the month and then when the time comes when according to this schedule when the time comes it's going to drop an invoice right it's going to take all the items that is that are currently at that moment in this list and create an invoice from them then it's going to reset itself refresh itself and look like this next time you come right because what happened to those items they're on this invoice they've been billed they're gone okay so it's refreshed itself and then the following month I do the same thing I'll so in the workflow right this is why it's so genius in the workflow all I have to do is just constantly put as I complete items I put them in this accumulating generator and then I forget about it I don't have to remember Ever to, I don't have to change the way I work, right? I don't have to remember to go, oh man, it's the end of the month. I got to go in and bill all these people. Yes, I did keep records of everything I did, but maybe I forgot something. I don't know. Did I add this time or did I add this thing? You don't know. Because you're remembering something that happened 28 days before or 25 days before. This is not good, right? But if you create a workflow, that every time you finish some action, the completion of that action involves putting it here in this bucket that is an accumulating generator. You have it set to generate invoices as open. You have it set to email them automatically. You're done. That's it. Because this thing will, every month, it won't forget. And it'll take everything you've added here and it will create an invoice and send it to Harrison. And you didn't have to remember, your staff didn't have to remember. And in fact, there might be items on here that you didn't even add. So your teammates added or other people added. And so anyone that's working in your organization can add to these things if, the, you know, if they have the appropriate permissions or the role. And every month, this thing will send out invoices directly. Now, again, you can set it where you don't want to do it as open because maybe you're not uh, very confident or, or you're not sure. You just want to review. You're very, you, you, you want to make sure. That's fine. You can do that. But in its ultimate automated expression, set it as open, set it as send, and confidently add items to it all throughout the month. Out it goes, out it goes, out it goes. And now your workflow has gotten much, much more efficient. Very cool. 
Yeah. And and in in a lot of businesses, this makes a lot of sense because you change the way that you work. And think about not only the time that you change save here, it's not only the time that you save, it's the amount of money that you lose every year because you forget to bill for it. Whether it's a small expense, whether it's a, uh, an, a, a timer that you just didn't get reported right. Uh, and that's the other thing is uh, with our timers, you don't have to have a timer timing report. You don't have to have a report at the end of the month and then go and change, take that data, which is a report, and add it to an invoice. You don't have to have that step anymore because what you do is you add your timers, and it's, they're exactly designed for this. You add your timers to the accumulating invoice generator, accumulating generator, and the invoice, and that becomes your report. That at the end of the month, it just gets dropped because each timer has a title and a description, and so it is a report and an invoice at the same time. Okay, I hope everybody sees that that you know that is exactly how that works. And again, as we looked at before. Um, this this generator here is exactly directly assigned to Harrison. Okay, all right. Now, I think we have covered on demand, recurring, and accumulating direct invoices. Okay, so let's go back and let, let's talk about the a little bit more abstract concept, but also an amazing and awesome. Uh, concept that in automation. All right, so let's stay with our accumulating. So now I have, let's look at dynamic and direct generators. And what's the difference between, what is this? Uh, what kind of witchcraft here? All right, direct, we, we just said that I can assign it to client or clients directly. But what about my future clients, right? What about my, my guy that, that I'm uh, getting ready to sign two months from now that I've never met, but he's starting, he's a lead now and he's, he's working his way through my funnel. Uh, and as he works through my workflows over the next two months, he's going to become a client. Do I want to create manually? A, do I want to come here every day? I sign a new client and add a new accumulating generator and redo all the uh, settings like I just did and make sure that it's 14 days and make sure that you know, the, the, the gateways are set up. No, I don't want to do that. I want to set an automation so that as this guy works, this comes through my workflow, my future client, that I can select him and say, that's my target. I can point to him in the automation. He's the target. You do your thing. Go automation, go. Okay? And the way, the way that works is you create a dynamic, okay, accumulating generator. Now, the difference between this, as you, you'll immediately notice, is there's no assignment here, okay? No assignment. And now we have these placeholders again, okay? So if I say um, accumulate our monthly legal services, right? And But now I want to insert like client last name. Let's just do it like this to save time. But you can use these. Uh, placeholders, as you see, and why is that? Why do placeholders need to be there? Because it's an automation, and my future client, who we don't know his name yet, is going to be inserted here so that in my list of accumulating generators, I'll see his one. His. All right, let's look a little bit more at the at the diagrams because this will help. Okay. So here we said re previously, here's the direct invoice generator that this factory belongs. We said it belonged to, to uh, Harrison or man, <laughs> what would we say? George Harrison, uh, the Beatles. So now this factory belongs to George and this factory belongs to Sally and they serve and they work only to create, uh, now we're talking about direct now. They work only to create invoices for, this one's for George, this one's for Sally. They're going in the list, going in the list according to the schedule or you know whatever configuration like we just discussed. And this could be any, uh, an on-demand, a recurring, or an accumulating. They all work the same way, except not on-demand doesn't have dynamic in that because they're already dynamic. But now let's look at what a dynamic invoice generator looks like. How does it work? Okay. Works a little bit differently because in dynamic we have this we have these generators, but they're not assigned. They don't have a name associated with them yet. 
right? They're just here in a list, and they and they ha are configured. They have all the configuration just like the others. They work just like the others, um, but they're not assigned yet, and they're, so therefore, they, and they're not even active until they have been assigned. And then when they are called into action, it takes this one and it kind of clones it and makes it a direct. Okay, so if I was going to give this one the name of George, I'm going to say, okay, I need George. My, let's say my future client we were talking about, his name is Dave. Okay, so out in the future, Dave is coming down my pipeline. He's a target. I say, look, Dave is what he needs monthly payroll services. Let's take that dynamic generator, let's clone it. Here it is, except now it's assigned to Dave. Okay, so I called this into action in automation. I said, all right, everything associated with this, all the details, all the meta, all the everything, let's take it and assign it directly to Dave, put it in line. Now here's Dave, George, and Sally. Okay? And every client that comes through my through my pipeline, will I can do this with, take the appropriate dynamic invoice generator, call it into action, set it here on top of this in, as a direct, right? Be, so the dynamic generates a direct and the direct generates an invoice. Okay, so here's the dynamic accumulating generator. We're gonna see, you see here, we're gonna set all the same, uh, met, same details, open, trigger every one month. Here's an interesting one. We don't know when, because we're in an automation now, we don't know when exactly. Remember first, I, before I chose uh, December 1st because I was manually creating that generator. But this one could be called, since it's dynamic, it could be called a year from now, or two years from now, we don't know. So I could set it to say, you know what, create it uh, one day relative to the uh, based on date, which is when, when it's called into action. I could say 14 days, I could say zero days, which would do it immediately. Uh, anything like that, I could I could stagger the, uh, the creation date relatively to the date that's called into action. Or more appropriately, I could set the day of the month. So before we set December 1st, in this case, I just set for one day of the month. And if it was triggered today, this dynamic invoice generator, then it would create a direct invoice generator assigned to the target, and the first creation date would be, since this was today, would be December 1st, or the 15th, or the 5th, or whatever you choose, okay? So this is a really nice option. You set all your payment stuff, you can set all your uh, minimum amounts, you can set all these things just like before, and then when it gets called into action, it'll get uh, assigned as a direct invoice generator and be in your list as a direct invoice generator and you'll see that if you look in your list of accumulating or recurring you'll have a different icon this one's dynamic that's what we're talking about now and this one is direct dynamic direct okay So again, just to hammer at home, these dynamic invoice generators of type, they can be of recurring or accumulating. When they're called into action in an automation, and what I mean is, uh, here, let's look at generator. See this accumulating, how it has the dynamic, recurring. These two, these are the two I'm talking about. When you call these into action, you're going to create it. You're going to select from the names of only the dynamic ones are going to show here. Okay, I'm going to select. And when that is called into action in the automation, it's going to create a direct invoice generator from this data and from this configuration and assign it to the target of the automation. Okay, these are our assigned. Sure, I think that was copied from before. All right, is it clear to the to the people in the audience, <laughs> or or is it not clear? <laughs> because yes, this without without the images, David. Yes, without the images and without the whiteboard, I really 
don't know that I would be able to, to explain. It's difficult to explain in in reality what these how this works. But I am proud to say that I believe that this is such an elegant system uh, for you know, and I and I only say that because. I truly believe it. I mean, I believe this is such an elegant way uh, to set up automated billing for many, many, many businesses. And between the on-demand, which can be, again, uh, you know, in most businesses, you will uh, be sending out very, very similar invoices, or, you know, or maybe you have six different varieties or 10 or 20 different varieties. But you're not going to have a hundred varieties, very likely. And if you do, it's only because of like quantities or things like that. Um, and if you do have that many different things, then um, automating your business is going to be difficult. The more you can systematize your business and come down to like predictable processes, predictable items, predictable products and services, then you're going to have a lot more luck automating. Uh, a lot more. It's not luck. You're going to have a lot more success automating, right? And um, and and that being the case, you would need to come down to this place. But 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 the, these this system should cover almost any type of setup that you have. Um, and let me answer a question or two, and then I want to get a little sneak peek of a feature and explain it to you. Let's look at the chat real quick. I think it's that's appropriate. So David says, I appreciate the use of images. Also the recorded version. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. This recorded version will will be very nice. I agree. It's clear with the images. Yeah, thank you, Bernadette. Bernadette is correct. Uh, Tim, not sure it's on a schedule. We have a release schedule that we're trying to stick to Monday and Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday but um, certainly within a, a week or two, two weeks maybe. Yes, Tracy. Tracy, thank you. Tra Tracy, it's almost like you're working for me. Almost like you're reading my mind. Uh, this this new feature that I want to explain. Tracy said I might have missed it, but there is is there a way to have a generator make an invoice based on an amount in a project or CRM field? Perfect, Tracy. Order the announce your preset. Good. All right, and Bernadette says, D does this eliminate the need for subscriptions? Well, not really, Bernadette. They're different. Let's see. My clients, my clients pay monthly for ongoing right now. Just, yeah, subscriptions is the way to go, Bernadette. Yes. Absolutely. Ask Netflix. They don't want to send you an invoice every month. They just want to reach right in your credit card and take the money and hope you don't notice. <laughs> right? Uh, same thing with subscriptions definitely have their place. Okay? But imagine you go to work for a, a, a large chain of um, print shops. When you when you say, okay, how do I want to invoice you? Do you want, you want to be on a subscription? They'll say, no, 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 no. You have to send us an invoice to our billing department, and then they have to get a PO number, and when you know, wow, da 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 da, and then next thing you know, you're going to get a QuickBooks check that was printed or sent automatically. Subscriptions don't work in a lot of business um, relation business uh, configurations. Now, in yours, it's perfect, right? Uh, so this this recurring generator concept is somewhat similar to a subscription, except it's not. What it is, is a recurring, it's, it creates an invoice every month that the client has access to pay manually, right? Either by sending you a check, they can log into their portal and pay it with a credit card or manually say, I would like to pay this with my credit card on file, but they have to take an action. Whereas a subscription, they set the credit card one time, Bernadette, and every month unless they make a change or you make a change it's going to attempt to charge that card and um, do follow-ups as needed based on the success or failure of that transaction does that make sense okay all right all right okay let me turn off the chat and then we will continue okay so let's get back to Tracy's um, Let's switch to a new. All right, Tracy, here you go. This, um, and I'm going to cover this, and this will be part of the recording because um, this feature will be live very likely before the recording is even released. It's that, it's that close. Okay. And what you're seeing now 
is mockups. Okay, so this is not the feature. You're not looking at my screen. It's not live. Don't ask the help team where it was and where it is. Okay. All right. So when you create new items in on this is only going to be Tracy in on demand invoice generators. It's the only place that makes sense. The only place that's logical. Okay. So in in some automation, if you're calling an on demand invoice generator. You have you have you you want to set the target. You want to set you have all the metadata, the payment data, but you but you're but you're not sure. Uh, like you said, you want to uh, uh, invoice a project or or some other amount that you're not sure of in the automation. And therefore, you can't really predict. Or here's another uh, another way it can be used is in some cases you have say ten different workflows, and each one requires a different amount to be charged or let's say 10 different choices and each one amount requires a different amount. Currently, currently, uh, before this feature, you would have to create 10 different on-demand generators, each one with a different amount item, and call the appropriate generator in that workflow. What can happen now is uh, with a dynamic item, basically what this will allow is for you to pass in the automation, a title, a description, a quantity, and a rate into this dynamic item. Let's look at how it will work. Okay, so when you add a new item and, and you want to save it, you can choose to make this dynamic. Okay, and you will be able to set default values. Okay, and the default values will be used if nothing is passed or it's called without passing data to it. Okay, so it would work just like a regular item. However, we, it's set up so that in the automation you will be able to pass the data um, which will override and overwrite, disregard the default data and that's the intended purpose actually. We, do it, we are going to allow default data which I think makes sense because in case that something is not passed or, or we don't have the right data it's going to uh, fall back to the default. Okay. And it'll work like when you reach that automation place, uh, you're going to select an on-demand generator. When you select an on-demand generator, we're going to look at it programmatically and say, does it have dynamic items? If it does, we're going to return and say, okay, here's the, here's the dynamic items. There can be one, there can be multiple even, right? And when it does, we're going to return the dynamic items and show the defaults. Okay, uh, but you'll be able to sit, change because in in this automation, in the previous example, we had ten different uh, use cases. You're going to have ten different automation areas opportunities where you can set uh, the, the what's going to happen on this invoice. Imagine ten different funnels. In each funnel, you'll have a, a an automation opportunity that's different. Well, it can be. Uh, yes, we're going to have placeholders here, uh, Tracy. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, this title, uh, this title is your reference title. Okay, and you'll see. Let's see here. How? See, this title is a reference title. This is actually the item title and the item description. So what happens is if you call this particular on-demand generator in the automation that's the reference title and we'll say okay for this item this this dynamic item what data do you want to pass yes and also static number you have the idea uh, possibility to just use a static number or you can use the value from a custom field number type that you would be able to select here now this is just this is very useful and I can come up with two or three good scenarios and I already have hinted at some of them about how this can be used currently but this is foundational work for the future specifically most appropriately for invoicing a project and that is uh, on this iteration path so when we uh, exactly so yes you'll be able to choose a custom field uh, from this qu this quantity, maybe the quantity you'll set as static one. Okay, the rate you set custom field and then choose your uh, your custom field project custom field there. 
if you want to use project custom fields. And then it will pass this amount into the invoice generator as it, it, it will into the generator as it's generating into the factory and then the invoice will come out with that rate and that total based on um, all these items all these all the day that's passed uh, here in on-demand invoice generator okay so see how we have items and meta, but no client because the client's always supplied by the automation, right? And in, in, in this case of on demand, but what we've done here instead, what this new feature will do, instead of having a list of items that's always the same, these dynamic items can be on the fly, overwritten, updated, modified in the automation. And that's what you'll be doing here in this UI. Make sense, Tracy? And yes, you're thinking, you're, the way you're thinking is exactly how we're thinking um, as far as down the road, more options. And in fact, we're gonna enable even from this first iteration will be, have the ability to do custom field math here, like current value plus some number. Uh, additionally, here, uh, we'll be looking to enable the ability to have static items and dynamic items. Uh, well, that will already be the case, static items and dynamic items. So the static items will just always be there. So in case like, you know, you have some, some standard fees that go line item, line item, line item, they're always the same. And then you'll have dynamic items. That's why when in the automation, when we go, when you choose a, an on-demand generator, we'll go and look and say, does it have any dynamic items? We'll return those here and let you set uh, override, set the override data, whatever you want it to be in this particular use case. So I think it's a, it's a good start on uh, a fairly elegant addition to this, this automation framework uh, for uh, invoice generators. Good, good, Tracy. I'm glad you see the benefit. Um, let me turn the chat on so everybody can see. Yes. Tracy's got it. But imagine in the future, right? Um, let's read. Let's see. I had. I don't have it now, but. But imagine proposals, right? As proposals come in, we can take this dyn We can use this dynamic item to accept data from a proposal that has choices on it, which is in the plans, or any any type of of dynamic situation where we're saying, okay, the amount that I want to charge is is variable based on something, and now I need to pass that variable, uh, the result, to this on-demand invoice generator. So now this invoice can be just, you know, all the payment terms and the metadata and all that you've already set, but except, except you don't know the amount yet because, you know, whatever a situation, you know, imagine like a shopping cart style, you know. You, situation where you're not really sure if they add this or add that or this add-on or that power up or whatever you want to call these things uh, this is a framework to accept those amounts dynamically in the future and also currently it, it does streamline quite a few processes most specifically it prevents you from having to create multiple on-demand generators to fit multiple uh, pathways. Like, for example, if you're on a kickoff form, you wanted to use the choice block to create multiple entry pathways. So now you can choose the same on-demand generator, not now, but when this is released in the next week or two, you can choose use the same on-demand generator and um, modify in the workflow, the automation flow, what the amount that will be passed in that particular choice and then in another choice, you'll set the other amount. And in another choice, you'll set the other amount. So everything will remain the same no matter what they choose, except for the amount of the invoice. Yes, Tracy, we've all done it. Tracy says she sent the wrong invoice to the wrong client because of having to manually create project invoices. Yes, I, I get it. And that's one of the things about automations that, um, that are not realized commonly. Uh, yes, they save you time. Yes, they they can streamline your business. But what they do that's almost even better is they 
virtually eliminate mistakes um, in admin. Anytime you put a human in the in the in the chain, you have you run the risk of mistakes, whether just from being overworked or just being distracted or whatever it is. That's not that's totally forgivable, but it's also regrettable and it's also avoidable. So the more you come across to your clients without mistakes and be clinical in your execution, the more they get you as a professional, the more they're likely to recommend you. So the knock on effects of automation can 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 go a very, very long way. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's uh, do a quick quick little review. No big deal. So we talked about manual invoice generation, the advantages of automation, the basic concept of invoice generators and how they are different than invoices. On demand, recurring, accumulating, and the differences between, and then direct and dynamic, and the differences between. So now we've eliminated all mystery and all <laughs> most questions from the idea of invoice generators. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. I hope this was helpful. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.